The Kara Sea is often referred to as the Arctic nuclear graveyard. Thousands of containers with radioactive waste were sunk there during the Soviet era, and Soviet atomic fleet ships lie at its bottom. The location of most of them was not known for a long time, because during the Cold War years an atmosphere of strict secrecy surrounded everything connected with the Novaya Zemlya archipelago. The problem of radioactive waste buried in Arctic waters began to be actively discussed back in the 2010s. The practice became widespread internationally in the early 1950s, with the active development of the nuclear fleet and the growing interest in the use of atomic energy in general. In the 1970s, the London Convention was adopted, which banned marine pollution, including radioactive waste, but the damage, not only by the Soviet Union, but also, for example, by the United States, was sufficient. Underwater Surprises I told you how things are with nuclear burial sites in a past video. But if everything is clear with graveyards, then with submarines that have crashed everything is not so straightforward. Now in the northern seas lie K-278 Komsomolets, already mentioned in the last video, submarines K-159 and K-27. Very little is known about each of them. The first to be sunk was the K-27 in 1982. Everything was not going smoothly with it at the design stage. Its advantage over others was the compactness of the reactor with a fast power build-up. In 1959 there were two accidents at the test bench, people were exposed to high doses of radiation. They wanted to cut the production, but then the Americans released their sub Seawolf, which, by the way, is also sunk now, 80 kilometers from the Californian coast, and the government hurried up with giving up the project. The characteristics of the boat were underestimated, so it didn't turn out well, and it was launched in 1962. In the first voyage the problems with the reactor started from the rapidly worn-out cooling mechanism, the second voyage took place only in 1965. K-27 faced problems practically in every voyage. There was a fire, inexplicable decrease of power, oxidation of alloys, and penetration of liquid metals into the gas chambers. Each time the sailors received radiation doses. On her last voyage, the boat left the ship repair dock for a performance check in 1968. An hour later, a massive radiation release occurred, with 144 crew members receiving doses of up to 1,000 X-rays. They brought the boat to the docks, but on the way nine people died and the average life expectancy of the remaining sailors was 50 years. The boat remained at the base for 20 years until it was sunk. If officers were warned that for five years they should preferably not have children, no one told us that. No certificates, no documents. Everyone was given a receipt, for 25 to 30 years we agreed to keep silent, not to reveal military secrets to anyone. In this way they deprived almost all conscripts of the opportunity to pass elementary medical examination, taking into account what happened on the ship. The officers had to undergo treatment every six months, but all the rest, once discharged, emigrated to the big Soviet country, just stayed with themselves and quietly died, said Vyacheslav Mazarenko, chief petty officer of the submarine, in an interview with BBC. The sinking of the submarine K-278 is one of those types of catastrophes, when they say it happened. Because till now the designers blame the Navy for incompetence of the sailors and the Navy authorities blame the scientists for imperfection of technologies, while the real state of affairs on that ill-fated day could not be established. The accident happened in April 1989. Hydraulic fluid leaked onto the instrument panel, resulting in a fire that was not extinguished in time. The compartments decided to blow out the smoke, which only resulted in a fire that began to cause the pipes to burst. The boat managed to surface from a depth of 1,800 meters. 30 of the 60 survivors remained in the cold water for over an hour before they were rescued by the buoy Alexei Klobistov. After that, the boat sank in the waters near Norway. The Norwegian government raised a scandal, but against the background of the collapse of the Soviet Union it did not make sense. The political part of the issue was dropped, and joint surveys of the hull began. Until 1998, seven expeditions were conducted to seal the hull of the submarine, which carried two nuclear torpedoes. Since the reactor was intact, it was in a sealed shutdown condition, it was from it that no leaks were registered. The only problem is with the torpedoes, they give increased radiation background to the silt settled around the iron sarcophagus. 
At the beginning of the century, four more surveys were carried out, each time excesses of the background were registered. But lifting the boat or torpedoes is a costly and senselessly risky endeavor. However, in 50 years something will have to be done, during this time, the hull can finally decay. The submarine K-159 kit was the main backbone of the Soviet submarine fleet. The class of these submarines has 10 series, which speaks of a successful initial project. After the collapse of the Soviet Union submarines were considered obsolete and rarely went to sea. The nuclear submarine K-159 stood in Gremica for more than 14 years until it sank in 2003. This trip should have been her last anyway, the submarine was towed with cables to Sivirat Vinsk to be dismantled and scrapped. But two days after leaving the port, the cables broke during the storm and the submarine began to sink. According to court records, Captain Sergei Zemchuznov twice repeated the order to evacuate while on the tugboat, but the crew did not listen to the commander. Water was flooding the compartments, and the crew continued to believe they would save the ship. There were ten crew members aboard, nine of whom died. In the pitch black of a northern night, helicopters searched for survivors, finding only two bodies and Staff Lieutenant Maxim Sibelsky. The boat had gone underwater 238 meters, with an open hatch and several holes. There was no one else to blame for the deaths of the sailors, except the responsible Captain Zemchuzny. He was found guilty, but then the verdict was overturned for lack of corpus delicti and he served three years instead of the four years the first sentence was handed down. The whole course of events developed in me an extremely negative attitude towards service under the command of people who do not have their own point of view or are afraid to admit their mistakes, shifting all responsibility on the shoulders of their subordinates. My ultimate goal is to be discharged from the ranks of the Russian armed forces, Sergei Zemchuzny wrote in an explanation to his appeal. The commander of the Northern Fleet, Admiral Gennady Suchkov, was removed from service. It is not surprising, when the headquarters was informed about the accident, they did not even know how many people were on the submarine and what was its route. According to data of Kurchatov Institute, the nuclear submarine kit poses the highest potential danger of radioactive contamination. The nuclear engine is not protected or sealed, there are no barriers between it and the water. But it was not switched on during the entire trip, so so far no leaks have been registered. The research teams lost funding for several years and had to leave the waste monitoring due to paperwork. The new monitoring is now rescheduled already within the framework of state programs on the development of the Arctic. The researchers are waiting until all the formal procedures are passed and the institute gets the money. At least it is already a federal program, structured and purposeful. Maybe someday they will get to the programs on water wealth purification, but now there is not even such an agenda. Subscribe to the channel and share this video with your friends. Give it a thumbs up. Tell us interesting facts you know about the topic of this video. See you in new videos.